Hey, what's up guys? It's VRES here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a complete tutorial slash walkthrough of Final Cut. In order for you guys to be able to use it, understand where everything is and how everything works. This video took a long time to make as I explain everything pretty well in an efficient amount of time. So please, if this gets you well acquainted with Final Cut, please like and subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so there are five parts I will be explaining as you can see here. Let's start with one. At the top left, which by the way, is where we actually import all forms of medias from background to text to clips. Anyway, first you will notice three icons, a clapboard with a star, a camera with the music note, and a title icon. The clapboard with the star is all your imported media. The four squares with the star in each of them are the libraries. As you can see, I have two. In them, there are events, as shown by the single starred square icon. And in them are projects and the imported media is associated with those projects. This includes videos and audios that you have imported into Final Cut. By the way, to do that, all you have to do is drag them into Final Cut or go to File, Import, Media. Anyway, just think of the libraries, events, and projects as files inside files. They're not really important unless one of your events categories gets really full and messy. If that's the case, then just make another event. Then again, this is for the future when you guys probably made a lot of projects and imported a lot of media. By the way, these things over here for the clapboard is just adjusting your viewing of the clips in the imported area. Next, we have the camera and music note icon, which is not that important, but it's where you can find previous photos and music you have imported. Another subcategory that this has is sound effects, and it's pretty cool. Finally, for these three icons on the top right, we have the default slash offered titles and text. And also there is generators, which are backgrounds, which really anyone uses as it's kind of tacky and you would usually use it for some specified project. For me, I would just download a picture or video off the internet. By the way, to see how to do that, you can click on my other video called how to download slash save YouTube videos. It should appear in one of the iCards here. Now that we are done with the top left area, let's look at the timeline. Over here, we have the timeline where the actual editing takes place. Let's look at number two, which is the middle left icons. First, we have the index, which I don't usually use, but it basically helps identify clips inside the project timeline. Look, when I search for a clip, it brings me right to it. To the right of that, we have these four similar box looking things, and they're just used for inserting the media from the top left area that we just reviewed. Just look at their icons as it shows where it inserts. Respectively, it's placing the media on top, in between, on the side, or just the audio or video only. Anyway, I don't think anyone uses this as you can just drag the stuff you need into the timeline. Look. To the right of all this, we have the options on what you can do to the timeline. Anyway, I would just leave it on select as you can do all the other ones. Like seriously, the select tool can trim and position. You can zoom in and out by doing command plus and command minus. You can, you can cut by doing command B or if you want to leave it on the blade, then just press B and get back to select by pressing A. With that, you don't need range selection as you can get the clip you want by cutting around it. And then there's the hand tool, which is pretty useless. I don't even know why it's there because you can scroll through the timeline without it. Okay, now that we are done with the middle left side, let's look at the middle right side. Right off the bat, we have five more icons that help when editing the timeline. Not the actual clips like the left side, but stuff that actually helps you out when editing. When it's blue, it's on. When it's gray, it's off. The first icon is the scrubber. It allows you to preview by hovering over your mouse. The second icon assists the first icon as it scrubs the audio along with it too. Wouldn't recommend it though as it's just squeaky as you scrub by. Third is the headphone icon which mutes all clips when it's on. Fourth is the snapping icon which helps you align audio or other videos on top of each other. It uses the yellow line. I would recommend you leave it on so you don't have to zoom in to align clips. However, it could get annoying sometimes if you don't want clips to align. Fifth is the film looking icon, and if you click on it, there's a sliders to zoom in and out of the timeline to go in depth or not. But I already showed you the shortcut, so this is not needed. Then there's other ways to view the timeline, just like there's other ways to view the imported media from the beginning. These all just change the visibility of stuff. Finally, at the very side, you have the effects icon and the transitions icon, where you can just drag and drop onto a clip if you need. For transitions, you drag and drop in between the clips. Final Cut has default effects and transitions that are pretty good, but if you want to install LUTs, which are presets or independently made items that you can buy or download online. Sometimes you have to pay and sometimes you don't, depending on where you're getting it from. If you want to see how to download LUTs and preview them in Final Cut, 
Click on my video titled how to easily install LUTs on Final Cut Pro. It should appear on one of the I cards. Also in the effects tab, there are two kinds, audio and video. Go test them out yourself. Number four is the top right corner. First thing I want to explain is keyframes. A keyframe by definition in animation and filmmaking is a drawing that defines the starting and ending points of any smooth transition. The drawings are called frames because their position and time is measured in frames on a strip of film. This is important because you can adjust the video by changing what's on the frame. More on that later. Anyway, all of these deal with the individual clip you're currently selected on. First, we got the film icon, which deals with the video inspector. In it, we have compositing, which is the combination of visual elements from separate sources into single images. This is often used to create the illusion that all elements are part of the same scene such as opacity or blend mode. Then we have transforming, cropping, distorting, and stabilizers, which attempt to stabilize your video. We then have rolling shutter corrections, which attempt to fix your video's wobbly slash tilted look, which is called the rolling shutter. Then we have the spatial conform that helps you fit, fill, or don't do anything to the video on the screen. Finally, we have rate conform, which fixes your frame rate and makes it look smoother. This is how you can decide to fit your video to match with the frames in the timeline, as your video might not match the project's frame description. Floor is the standard default. The rest are useful when you want to do slow motion or fast motion. What it does is combine the frames to make it look smoother. The next icon is the color triangle, which is the color inspector. This allows you to color grade your videos, sort of like a filter or effect you can personally make. Next is the volume icon, which is the audio inspector. Finally, we have the eye icon, which gives you details of the clip you're on, such as the duration, name, frame rate, etc. Like I said earlier, all of these deal with the clip that you are currently on slash selected. If there are video effects that you put on one of the clips through the effects tab, it will show in the video inspector. And same way, if you put a effect on the audio, it will show in the audio inspector. Anyway, back to keyframes. If you add them, it will change along for each frame you adjusted it on, like this. You can also save presets that you put on here and apply them to another clip. Last but not least, we have the playback slash display screen, which shows you what your video is looking like. There are editings that take place here too. This shows it all. Here is the title and info. Here is the view of the playback screen. If you zoom in, you can adjust where you look. Over here is where you can go in full screen. The timing icon deals with the timing of a clip. You can speed it up, slow it down, hold it, which means freeze frame, and other things like reversing the clip, speed ramping, and a lot more complicated video effects that deal with the timing of the clip. Then another color inspector help, then video inspector help. There, there's cropping, transforming, distorting, and it helps you work with keyframes. And when you're done, you gotta click done. And there we go, we just went over everything in Final Cut. By now, you should know your way around it. And if you look at Final Cut as the five sections I just described, such as the imported stuff, which is number one, the timeline editing, the clip editing that are in the timeline, and the playback screen. It may look overwhelming at first, but once you understand these sections, it's pretty easy. Additionally, there are so many cool effects and tricks you can do in your videos. If you want to see that, subscribe and watch for my videos. I've even posted a few already. So thank you so much for watching. And I really hope this helped because Final Cut really is one of the most easiest and professional editing softwares out there. So if you learn it, you could be an editing guy. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, peace.